So the Buji Boardwalk, uh, Kuki Alanji word, which is the indigenous persons of this land, uh, call it the place of spirits. There you go. Interesting enough. Um, we are going for a bit of a nocturnal spot. I'm making an intro for this, which is this right now, um, because I hopefully there'll be enough to to make a whole video and see some cool stuff. Otherwise, uh, yeah. If not, you yeah, you'll probably never hear this. And if you are hearing this, when then? Well then, we got a good video. <laughs> Alrighty, so starting us off, an absolutely incredible creature. Look at the size of this katydid, katydid, whatever you pronounce it. I don't want to get my hand too close, because those spines are huge, and I don't know the intentions of this creature. Oi, look at its antennae. Antenna, so many ways to pronounce so many different words. Anyway, it is a massive creature. You see the size of my hand. Hopefully I can get close enough to show off the spines on its legs, but it is not having it might be able to see that but although I'm sure it's it's getting shadowed anyway massive massive creature Whoop, and it's just two and a half jump half line over there wicked yeah massive spikes ah, but the shadows getting in the way oh well just a real prickly uh, strange looking creature that one Alrighty guys, coming in on a native here. The eyes shine from a little distance off, look like a toad. But you can see he's not actually a toad. So, I don't know what it is. So I've got the name up now, I'm sure, because I've found an ID. But at this current point, I don't know what I'm looking at. Some type of barred frog or toad. You can see all the barring along the back legs there. I'm trying to get the camera so it's not shadowed. There you go. This way, a nice little face on him as well. So yeah, don't know what he is, but it's a decent size frog. Is my finger? But yeah, there you go. Nice little native to to see. I've only actually seen one toad tonight, which has been fantastic. Uh, I thought that was going to be my second, but not uh, barred something to a frog or toad or whatever so yeah pretty nice to see actually not a lot else if you're into spiders there has been a, a lot of spiders cruising around there's a bit more frog action down this way as you can hear but otherwise other than a whole heap of spiders there is is not a lot else going on unfortunately alrighty so continuing on with our frog action we've got someone here Brown tree frog of sorts. Very sort of warty like lesions. Oh, well, not lesions, warty like little things going on over its body. It's hard to get the light on so you can see the animal without actually the glare just ruining the colours because it's sort of like a, it blends in incredibly well with the log down here that it's actually sitting on. Almost the same type of texture as well. There you go, that's sort of best as you can get it. But yeah, name up, I'm sure I got it. Here's my finger, so not a very large animal. But uh, a very cool one. More arboreal. Up in the actual trees, rather than the other one on the ground. And you can hear everyone else going off as well. So, if anything, it's turning out to be a night for frogs. Which is, uh, is just as good, really. Brilliant. Wicked. See you later, buddy. Look, one of the culprits to this cacophony of calls. Another beautiful white lipped tree frog. Absolutely stunning. Get you an idea of the size. Pretty big animal. Pretty big tree frog. Beautiful. These sort of colours are turning out alright, I guess, which is quite good. Got that really sort of sandpapery like skin I was talking about. Try and get a better view. 
of the animal. Oh, but yeah, those those colours are really getting washed out. This is the lowest setting I've got on the torch. I have to hold it sort of above them so I don't get shadowing from the GoPro. But it really, I don't know, doesn't look like it was doing the colours of the brown tree frog or whatever that was, justice. So we reposition a bit. There you go. But this guy, this guy's looking all right. Wow, look at that, how cool. He did have his throat pouch out, but now he is laying flat against the leaf as I've worried him a little bit. But anyway, white lip tree frog. Seen a few of these guys getting around, uh, but always an incredible species. Look at those colors, absolutely stunning. Oh, absolutely beautiful. Well, he's not having a great time. We'll let him get back to it. We'll keep looking for more frogs. And you can get back to cooling, trying to attract a lady and out cool those boys. Just listen to them go. Incredible, they're quietening up a bit now, but they were going off at each other. Ah, beautiful. <laughs> there we are. Excellent. So what I didn't know last time, I don't think, is that these are Australia's largest tree frog species. Uh, so largest in the world, sorry. Largest tree frog species in the world, your white-lipped tree frogs. And they do get massive. Um, this one looks particularly larger, a little bit more so than the, the last one I saw. But um, yeah, very decent sized animals, very beautiful animals as well. They've got a real beautiful green to them. Similar to just your general tree frog species. But otherwise, just a massive size. They are wicked. They'd be able to take down a, a decent variety of like small to medium prey species. There you go. You don't want to blind him or anything like that. But yeah, incredible. A uh, little tidbit of information to find out that they are, yeah, the world's largest tree frog. So not the world's largest frog or anything like that, but world's largest tree frog. There you go. I was only just thinking. Snake can make this video pretty good. Hit the benchmark, hit a, it's a nice video. You can make a video out of all those frog species. But here is a night tiger. Boiga irregularis, who we've seen in a previous video. Hard to get a nice little view of this animal. There you go. Whoops. There you go. Beautiful, beautiful head on the animals, as you just saw there. Doll eyes, I love the head and the bulgy eyes, and just that real skinny body, just stripes along it. Absolutely wicked, absolutely wicked animal. Look how agile, how well adapted they are to the trees. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Just cruising through effortlessly. And look at the size of its neck. So skinny, almost as much, almost as skinny or skinnier than the stem, the stick that it's going up. And then its head just bulges out with those excellent eyes. Beautiful nonetheless. Incredible animal. See you later, buddy. Not much of that tree left to go, but... And here we have everyone's not so favourite frog, unfortunately. So, very prolific throughout the top end of Australia, the far north Queensland, uh, uh, yeah, the top end of the Northern Territory, all that kind of stuff, and making their way uh, further south every day uh, down the east coast. So this is the cane toad, Renella marina, marinus, something like that. But otherwise, uh, yeah, poison glands here and on the other side, same position. They, yeah, were introduced for cane beetles. So a native beetle ripping through the sugar cane plantation. These guys were brought over to fix that up and unfortunately it went horribly wrong. And now their numbers are huge. They have a ridiculous amount of babies. I'll get the numbers up there. I can't remember exactly. And um, anyone who eats them just gets absolutely ripped through uh, because of this poison. So someone in Australia can eat them. Uh, the keelback or freshwater snake. Uh, that's because they're, yeah, they've come over from Asia or like not come over from Asia 
um, and been introduced, I mean, but like their lineage um, is Asian and where the, yeah, be poisonous frogs and toads are, so they've built an immunity to it. So they're, to my knowledge, the only animal. Uh, there might be others that are naturally immune to the cane toad venom, uh, but otherwise there are animals that have worked out now um, how to, to success, successfully dispatch and, and eat these toads. So they'll flip them over like your black kites, ravens, that kind of stuff, eat all of the good stuff uh, and avoiding the, the poison glands. Because uh, unfortunately, like, yeah, they're, at the end of the day, they're a pretty toad. They're a pretty frog, uh, really. So all toads are frogs, but not all frogs are toads. Um, so, yeah, they're not all ridiculously different, but otherwise, uh, they are a pretty animal. Um, it's just a shame that they were introduced by someone. It's gone horribly for our native wildlife, because these guys get around having enormous amount of babies. They take food. Uh, from our native frogs um, and then anyone comes along like a water python, a quoll, doesn't have to be a reptile, uh, obviously you ignore them quolls, they eat these guys and they die uh, because of the poison there uh, and it really doesn't take too big of a, a, a toad to, uh, to do the job. So yeah that's why they're here, that's what they're doing um, and yeah I'm sure there's still a lot of research going into, I would hope so, uh, to look at the yeah, we're trying to get rid of these guys, although in some areas you're already having a bit of bounce back there. The initial wave of toads has gone through, absolutely cut through the native wildlife populations. Um, and now they're starting to bounce back with, um, yeah, sort of knowledge, so to speak, of uh, avoidance uh, of these animals. So, there you go. Alrighty guys, you need my raw reaction right now. I just heard a lesser sooty owl call. So, I'm hopefully they're gonna call again. I just wanted to start recording. This is like a rabbit in the headlights kind of scenario right now. Um, blah, 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 my brain's not wagging. But I dri was driving with the windows down. Hopefully you can still see me and it's not a blur. But I'm gonna try and, it didn't sound like it was super close. Didn't sound like it was super close, unfortunately. And look, that's what I had to turn into. It was a lot more severe, so that's not too bad. I had the windows down, I was driving along and I just heard that typical call. I'll play it for you now. So that was a little sound bite of Omen, the lesser sooty owl from Raptor Domain. And so what you just heard was her calling. And that's exactly what I heard. Something like that. But I am buzzing right now. This is, this is like a target, target species. S scrub pythons, sooty owls. Boyd's forest dragons, that's what I'm really keen on. Lesser sooty owls than most. I love my raptors. If I can find a lesser sooty owl, I will be the happiest boy in all of the land. Oh golly. Very average call by me. And no call back. I do a better bar now, to be honest. If any of my ex-workmates are listening, they can definitely attest to that. My bar now call is superb. It is only for special occasions. So I can't do it right now. But my lesser sooty owl is really required right now. Although it's not good enough. No. Oh. Bugger. All right, two and a half minutes of me rambling and finding nothing. If I see anything, you'll see it, but otherwise, on with the tour, I guess. Alrighty, guys, so up in the tree here, some little mammal marsupial. I am not 100% sure what I'm looking at here. So, hopefully, oh yeah, no, it's picking up. I don't know what it is. Whether it is a rat or a possum I'm not sure it's got very possum like eyes and ears looks like a ring tail possum eyes and this sort of ear scenario so hopefully with that I'll have enough to have a successful ID we'll have to wait and see Oof. But I am at a new location now. So first animal in a new location. This is the Jinbala uh, Rainforest Walk. 
so we'll see what we can see in here. Look at this. They breed them big out here. Another massive, like Katie did. Oh, it's going to be difficult to hold it and show my hand, but look at the size of the thing. Massive. This one's got like a big old ovipositor out the back. And then those massive legs. Less spines than the last one, but uh, still a massive creature. Crazy. <laughs> Alrighty guys, heading back from, yeah, Daintree, north side of Daintree River, back south now. Um, yeah, it was a pretty good night. I uh, was going to camp out there, but I thought I got too much to do tomorrow. I'm just going to drive home, road cruise all the way home, hopefully pick up some snakes. Uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, I can wake up early tomorrow and get some stuff done rather than camp because it is pretty humid uh, as well at the moment. So I wouldn't get a good uh, night's sleep, that's for sure. So um, yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, it was a pretty good nocturnal uh, wildlife spot. It was a pretty good night. Uh, heap of frog species, uh, snake as well, little mammal as well to ID. Um, so yeah, all around a pretty good night. So pretty stoked with what I saw and thank you very much.